Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Kelmi here. So one of the main reasons we go to work is so that we have enough money for ourselves and our hamster to eat for the entire month. And if it don't work, then both of us will have to eat air and drink water for that month. But have you ever thought about this? What if you don't have to work and yet still have enough money to eat? Yes, yes, it's a real thing. And no, it's not a cheat code where you enter Rosebud in the Sims game and get infinite money. Because there's a real way to not work and still have enough money to eat. The term for this is called financial independence. And believe it or not, there are many people who have already achieved this status. So in this video, I will show you how much money you need so that you can retire and go live at some Sentosa beach and drink martini all day long. Then I will also tell you what are the problems with this strategy and how you can solve it. But before I start, I would greatly appreciate it if you can help to tap the like button. In return, I will show you some goldfish swimming around. Alright, let's not waste any time and let's start right now. Before I show you how to calculate a retirement amount, let me show you some real data because science. First is the Household Expenditure Survey 2017-2018. It shows that the average money expense per person is around $1,628. The top three expenses are housing at 29%, food at 20%, and transport at 13%. Then, the second study is done in 2019 with collaboration between Singapore universities which studies how much Singaporeans need for basic standard of living. Basic ah, means you are not using the money to go KTV every day or something ah. So in the study, they found that the average money expense for single elderly is $1,379 and $1,721 for single person aged 55 to 64. By the way, both of these studies take into account recreation and entertainment as well as holiday expenses yeah. So, it doesn't mean once you retire, you can only sit in your house and watch Mediacorp on the TV all day long. That, that would be boring in many ways. From what we can gather from these two studies, around 2017 to 2019, the money amount that you will need is between $1,279 to $1,721. Let's do some math. Let's assume you are a high flyer and you spend $1,721 every month. Multiply that by 12 months and assuming you retire at 60 years old and leave till 85. Your money need to last you 25 years. So at the minimum, you will need $516,000 in your bank before you can retire. And if you live longer than that, then ho oh ho. By the way, this amount will keep increasing because of inflation. And no, it's not PAP's fault that everything is becoming more and more expensive, yeah? Singapore's latest inflation rate is around 2.4%. But the average global inflation rate is around 3%. So yeah, those are some scary numbers. But luckily, you don't have to save that much because of magic. Just kidding, it's because of investment. Wait, let me clarify so you don't get confused. By investment, I mean buy and hold good stocks like Apple and Google. Ah. Not by becoming apes and go and buy those meme stocks like AMC and GameStop, yeah? So anyway, there's this very important study that you need to know called the Trinity Study. It was done in 1998 by three professors at Trinity University. This study tries to find out what's the safe withdrawal rates from your investment so that you will never run out of money. The idea is this, imagine your investment to be like a tree and the branch is like money. So while the tree is growing, you will need to chop off some of the branch so that you can use it. And as long as you don't chop off too much, you will never run out of woods to chop. Yes, it sounds like magic because it really is. The Trinity study ran the simulation from 1926 to 1995 and it was also updated to 2017. And as you all know, a lot of bad things happened during that time. Stuff like Great Depression, World War II, Cold War, Vietnam War, Black Monday. But of course, there are good things too, like Game of Thrones is super good right until the last season. But that's beside the point. The study was conducted on different kinds of portfolio compositions like 100% stocks to 100% bonds and was also tested on different time frames from 15 years all the way to 40 years. Here's what they found. If you have a portfolio of at least 25% stocks and withdraw 4% from it for 25 years, there's almost 100% chance that you will never run out of money. So using back the previous example, as long as that $516,000 is invested and not in the bank, and you only withdraw 4% from it every year, even if you live a bit longer, there won't be any problem. Then you might say, huh, retire at 60 years old ah? Ain't nobody got time for that. What if I want to retire like, like right now in my 30s? They found that if you withdraw 4% for 40 years, at best, the 75% stocks portfolio has a 92% success rate. Then you'll be like, wow, if my money is finished, then chill, chill, lo. That's a solution for this. 
you can reduce the withdrawal rate from 4% to 3.5%. It was found that if you have 100% stocks in your portfolio and only withdraw 3.5% from it, the success rate is around 98%. So here's what it means. If you want to retire in your 30s, you need to have a portfolio size that's big enough so you can withdraw 3.5% every year to have a high success rate. As for how much, let's do some math. Let's assume your monthly expense is $1,500. Multiply by 12 months and we divide by 3.5% withdrawal rate. You will see that we actually only need 515k portfolio to sustain our retirement for 50 years. Now, of course, if your expense is higher, you will need to allocate a higher amount. But that was a rough guide on how to calculate how much you need to retire. As you can see, you don't really need $1 million to retire. I'm sure you are still very skeptical right now of this strategy. You'll be like, really or not? What if got inflation? And guess what? You are right. There are really some issues to this. The first issue is of course, inflation. This is a chart of Singapore's inflation rate. As you can see from this chart, there are times when the inflation goes super high, up to 4, 5, 6%. And this is the inflation rate for the US. There have been a few times where the inflation rate went past 5%, even reaching 20% during World War II in the 1940s. And with the US printing money, like, like money grows on trees, until 40% of US dollars were printed in just the last 12 months, it's very possible that inflation will go back up within a few years, which will bring a big problem to this strategy. The second issue is that these data are just past data, and as they say, past performance doesn't guarantee future performance. It was during this time where the US is doing quite well, eventually becoming a superpower now. And the S&P 500 gave an annualized return of 10%. But what if US encounters another lost decade where it goes sideways for a very long time? It's certainly possible, according to Ray Dalio. And it's not just US haul, the Singapore Strait Times Index has been going sideways for almost 15 years. Japan market has not recovered from its peak since many years ago, same for Italian market. Third issue, the studies I showed you just now assumes that you are healthy, you can eat, you can go to toilet, you can walk downstairs and order Thai fun and let the auntie call you Schweiger or Mani. But let's say if you have an illness like maybe cancer or you need kidney dialysis, then it's very likely that your cost of living will increase because you need to pay for hospital bills, treatments and medicines and maybe even hire a maid to take care of you 24-7. So those are some of the problems with the withdrawal strategy. But with that being said, I have real solutions. First, of course, is always to live below your means. Even if you are able to withdraw 3.5% to 4% annually, doesn't mean you have to. You can try to lower your withdrawal rate to 2 to 3%. That way, even if the market doesn't give you as much return as it did in the past, you will still be alright and won't run out of money. Second, on the other side of spending money is of course making money. Before you retire, try to make your investment portfolio as big as possible. Even if you can retire on just $515,000, don't just YOLO and throw letter tomorrow. Instead, you can increase the amount to let's say like 800 k or even $1 million to increase the buffer. Besides that, when you are retired, what are you going to do? Netflix and chill every day ya? Yeah? I'm sure you can watch TV for one month, but 30 years? No right? That would be super boring. The whole idea of early retirement is so that you can be free and do all the things that you have wanted to do, like start a YouTube channel to give lame financial advice, or become a video game streamer or travel the world. Whatever you like to do, you can always find ways to earn some money, which will pay for some of your life expenses. Next, while you cannot budget for illnesses when you are old, you can certainly plan for it. And the best way is to get insurance. So while you are busy growing your money, don't forget to protect your money also. The earlier you sign up for insurance, the better because it gets more and more expensive as you become older. Fourth, and this tip is for the more adventurous people. Rather than retiring in Singapore, consider moving to another country to retire. According to Sydney, many countries like Australia, New Zealand, UK, and even US have a lower cost of living when compared to Singapore. So yeah, if you want to retire early, start planning early. And who knows, 10 years from now, you no longer have to work for money. And that's all for today. Are you planning to retire early? How are you doing it? Let me know down below. Like, share, and subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday.